Hi class. Now I'm working on the Bristol board today, which is, um, and I'm working on the vellum one. It's thicker paper. Um, it comes in different brands. Strathmore is very common, usually yellow. You could also work on watercolor paper. This one's also Strathmore. The difference is with watercolor paper, you can't see it very well, but it has a more of a tooth or grain sort of to it, the paper. So it has a textured surface. Whereas the Bristol is going to be a lot thinner. I mean, not thinner, sorry, smoother on the vellum. Um, either one's fine. It's harder to get a straight line on the more textured surface. Now, if you're going to work like that person did who had that perfectly square nice one you're gonna need to lay it out with a ruler and pencil and get it nicely done and measure it just like you did with your ink project with the line work the line project and get it like a even sized box maybe like an inch or inch and a half each and ten of them um, but that's not necessary because the way I'm going to do it today, I'm actually just going to make them in swatches that are pretty big, like this big maybe, and try to mix them. And then I'm going to go in and, and cut them out afterwards. So if I have a circle that big and I need to make a square out of it and cut them out, or I can use a circle I guess, then and glue them down then I need to make sure it's big enough that I can get a decent square out of it that's why I'm saying drawing these lines because if I had a tiny little square I can't get a very good swatch right so this is the way I would do it just because I'm not lazy but I like to make things simpler for myself and to me it's easier to um, do the paint and then pick the ones I like it's not easier in terms of cutting them out even and square. That part won't be simpler. But what is simpler is once I have a bunch of swatches, I can reorder them and rearrange them until I get the steps. And then if I have one that's not working, I can just take it out and make a new one instead of trying to like get them perfect right away on the set long strip, right? So if you have a set long strip and you're trying to do 10 tones on there, if you mess up one of them, you have to go in and try to fix it over and paint over it, paint over it. But if you have these, each one's a swatch, then you can rearrange them. And then once you get them the way you like, you make them really square, cut them out so that they're perfectly square. And then you can paste them all side by side on another piece of paper. Okay? So that's why I'm telling you to do it. Not because it's easier for making them square or laying them out that way, but because it's easier to make sure your paint's in natural steps by doing it the way I'm telling you. Okay, so my paint got a little dry there. Pull that part off, and I'm going to put some white in here, and I'm going to put some black over here. I'm going to shake it up because it's been sitting for a little bit. There you go. I'm not going to need as much black. It's a stronger pigment. And I'm going to use um, my, not my flat, I'm going to use my round brush. I'm going to get it a little bit wet. Not too wet, but a little bit. Now, I'm going to dry it off after I get it wet, just so it flows and the bristles are in the right direction. Now the one, the black one and the white one are going to be easy to get, right? I'm just going to take and go, okay, that's the black. I need to paint it all down. That's the other benefit of doing the um, swatches the way I'm telling you, is you don't have to worry about the edges being perfectly clean because you can come back and cut them out and then the edges will be clean. They won't be fuzzy looking, right? As long as you get a big enough swatch. So there's the black. I'm not going to spend forever showing you the black because that's the most, the black and the white are the most straightforward ones. Okay, so you're going to do that with a big circle of the black. And I also want you to do the white because 
the white of the paper is not the same as the white of the paint. They're not exactly the same. Not all whites are exactly the same. And, you know, like it might be feel nitpicky to you, but you can actually control your white better if you use the white here. And the sheen of the whole thing, because paint has a sheen to it, will match. So you can do a big white one. And it'll have the same feeling on your composition, too, when you use the white of the the white paint instead of the white of the paper. All right, so now I'm going to try to mix a middle gray first before I do anything else. I'm going to put a lot of the white paint in the middle there, like that. And I'm going to try to get, i got to mix a lot of it. So I'm going to pay attention to kind of how much I'm doing. That way later when I need to mix a bunch of it, I can get it accurate. I'm just going to add a little bit at a time. Because the black is very strong. As you can see already, the black is very strong. That's already below, above the lightest, lightest gray I would want, just from that little bit. This is where a palette knife would come in handy, because then you don't get different color paint stuck up in the ferrule, and then it's not an even tone. When you mix, you want to make sure it's really mixed together, not like parts of the white or chilling out sitting around there not coming through like i just had what do i mean by chilling out not coming through i mean there was bits of white up in the brush that weren't um mixing in so you got to make sure you really mix it together and get it even even tone that's still not quite middle gray you're gonna have to use quite a bit of paint for this and you're gonna end up polluting your paint after a little bit, so you just got to know that you're going to have to scrape off your palette every so often. That's a little bit of too much black already, see? So I got to add a little more white in. The white's not as strong, so I got to add more of it. Okay, we're getting pretty close now to that middle gray. It's still a little dark. Just add a tiny bit to it. Okay, you can't see when I'm doing this, but I'm looking at the image of the 10 value steps that I um, posted. Um, I posted it on a page called 10 value scale. It was right after the um, lecture and assignment there in the module. So I didn't make a circle yet, but this one is getting really close. Now I'm mixing paint. And that's an additive process. Um, one pigment added to the other in paint. And light on a screen is subtractive, which is kind of weird. But they're subtracting colors to make it so they don't match perfectly. So you got to use that as kind of a get it shooting, sh what direction you're shooting towards. And then after a certain point, you've got to start really paying attention to the pigment more than just that screen image but it's a good way to get you started now some of you may be saying to yourself why did he mix the middle gray first hmm why didn't he just start from one direction one side to the other and just go in order lightest to darkest well because i want to have something to compare against the white and the black in the middle and i know everything in this direction I have a couple more steps, one, two, three, and then everything this direction, I mean, sorry, one, two, three to that way, and then I have everything this direction, one, two, three, four, is going to have to be darker and lighter than this, so it's kind of a great way to set myself up as with a reference point in the middle of the whole thing, okay? So that's black, white, middle gray. Now I need to do um, a really, really start going towards the lighter side i'm going to start doing that and then the darker side i'm going to show you i'm not going to do all 10 tones um because it would be really probably boring and you wouldn't necessarily want to watch every single one of them but i'm going to do a couple that are harder to do and i'm also going to show you how i cut these out and um, can apply them together on a swatch okay so that's the middle gray at this point now i'm going to clean out my brush because it's getting full of paint so I'm just cleaning it in there. 
I got a jar with some water. Um, you need to be careful what you use to clean your brushes with. You don't really want to use a you don't want to use a drinking glass that you're going to be drinking out of later. So use a spare jar or something you have. Um, you don't want to ingest material like paint. So better not to do that. Get it all clean. My water is getting already pretty gray. So in a little bit I might decide that I want to um, change out the water, but I'm still okay for now. It hasn't gotten too full of black. I'm going to make sure the ferrule of my brush is cleaned out. So I don't ruin the brush and let it get dried up in there. Alright, so I'm going to go towards the darker side first. I have my middle gray on the palette already, so that's okay. I'm going to add some more black paint to it and just see how quickly it darkens up a little bit more for the next couple steps up. I'm going to go for the one just below the black because I want to see show you how little it actually takes to get really dark. It's barely in black and you can go really really too dark too quickly. A lot of people get that one kind of wrong because they're like oh it's almost black. What's the difference? Well it's like black but not quite and so it's like you got to squint your eyes and really look at it and you can see the difference see this one's kind of good but it's way too way way too um light still so what i'm going to do is take you can't see that very well sorry i'm going to take and scoop all that over there so i can use it and then i'm going to add a lot more black to it and then that's going to get I'm basically using my all the wells in my palette to my benefit. It's going to be a little messy, but you're going to do all right with it. And I want to make sure every well that I'm using is really well, <laughs> well and well. These are wells, and you also want to make sure it's very consistently mixed so that it's got a homogeneous, uniform color to it. It doesn't have streaks of different paint in it. So that's getting pretty good. So here we go. I've got to get another big circle over here and make sure I don't get too small of a swatch. Okay, this is also a good example to show you right now when you're doing your composition and you have it drawn out the shapes. You really want to pay attention to getting right up to the edge and having clean edges. You also really, really, really don't want to. Um, add a bunch of water to your paint because it'll start acting more like watercolor and it'll get an inconsistent value to it. It'll, it won't feel like it'll get all bloomy and change and it won't be one consistent tone. So if you notice people have a tendency to add a lot of water you could lighten it up that way and you can use acrylic that way that's fine but for this project it doesn't work good because it'll make your values get all funny. So if you notice what I'm using my brush I'm drying it out a lot for that reason before I put it in the paint because I want to have the pure pigment. That's looking pretty good. And if I don't apply it thick enough, I can get down to the paper. So I'm really trying to make sure I keep it thick on there to get the pure tone. So that's that one right below black. Maybe there's a little more I could do, but that's pretty close. And so you see the benefit already is when I go to cut these out, I can arrange them much easier. Um, if I don't, if I don't like the step, I can just make another one and kind of rearrange it to us to where I get ten steps that I'm happy with that are consistent jumping points. All right. So that kind of takes us through how you this process of how you do it. But I want to show you also how to get that really light, barely barely up from white one two because that's kind of a tricky one as well people are afraid to um to kind of have the big jumps also if you squint your eyes like and look at them you can see the jumps you need to like get a lot of them done get think where you think you're pretty happy with them and then lay them out one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and then move them around and get them in the order that works and then if one of them's not working, you're like, don't just say, oh, it's good enough. Go back and actually mix it and get them to where they work really well with each other, okay? 
as in they work well as in the jumps and there's 10 of them all right so let's get a really light really light one okay so i have this i have this middle gray over here and i have the white i'm just going to take some more of that middle gray and plop it into one of these little inventions on my palette called a well and just add quite a bit of white to it this palette that i'm using is a little small i'm realizing i'm already kind of feeling like i'm running out of a lot of space so i probably use a paper plate or something next time they have big palettes you can buy but you know sometimes it's not worth it unless you really know you want to do painting to buy a big palette you can just use a plate of some sort that's getting pretty good it's a little bit light so and this is where a bigger palette would help me okay that's good so i have that i gotta make sure make sure i do it big enough so i'm gonna continue on with the idea of a circle that i drew out looks like my video is buffering a little bit i'm sorry guys and then i'm gonna do that it's not really light enough actually it's pretty it's still actually pretty darker than i thought so this is an example of why I'm happy that I'm doing it this way of cutting it out because I can make another one and say, no, nope, that one's not right. It's still not right. It's got, it's also streaky because my brush had some paint in the ferrule, so that's good to know. I'm evening that out. Okay, so that one's definitely not going to be light enough for the really light one. So I'm going to have to take inside my palette and take that paint and then um, add more white to it so that it actually takes some of it out put it over here and then add more white to it so it actually works better so put it over and get that really light one so you can see how it gets pretty pretty messy palette pretty quickly sometimes if it gets too messy i'm just going to take a paper towel and uh and just clean it all up and start afresh if it gets too messy. So you're going to use some paint doing this, and that's you know that's part of the whole project. So you're going to want to buy the bigger sizes for this. Okay, so you have those. I'm just going to let this dry for a minute, and then I'll show you how I cut them out. And I have ten different steps, um, and that'll help you get little squares, and then you can arrange them and play the shell game and see if you can get ten of them. So I'm going to pause it for a second. Let these dry and then we'll talk about that part. Now you see I'm getting a lot of different tones built up here. Um, I got a lot of them. They're mostly drying. They're pretty close. I'm noticing some of them are too close to each other, so I'm probably going to have to go in and do a little more mixing. But this is why I'm doing it. Pretty soon here, I'm going to cut them out and I can use, um, kind of move them around before I square them up. I want to compare them to each other and see um, what I'm missing and then I'll actually go ahead and make them all nice and even and square looking so this is what saves you some time uh, not having to uh, paint over and over again on the same exact little square piece of paper but to be able to get them uh, laid out and then compare them and then make more if you need to so I'm going to cut these out and see where I'm at I'll show you how I do it and then after that we'll square them up together okay so this is where I'm at I'm gonna um, just take my scissors you know pretty basic carefully just cut them out keep them big circles for a little bit because I'm gonna square them up after I decide on the 10 that I like but actually work in even steps one last thing I forgot to tell you if you have a hair dryer um, you can use that to speed up the dry time. Don't put it like really close. Hold it back and don't put it on hot. Put it on warm and move it evenly. It'll speed it up a little bit. The other thing is in this one here I noticed I got like a different tone a white coming through like a streak. That means when I was mixing it with my brush I got somehow white stuck in the brush somewhere and it didn't get an even tone. 
that's why people sometimes use palette knives um, for that reason. So you have to be really careful to really mix, mix, mix on your palette till it's an even paint. There's no streaks of different color, like more black or more white in the paint. You want it to be really even. You got to be pretty systematic about it. So that's something that'll help you if you do that. So I'm going to end. This is part one of the um, value scale demonstration, part one. And then I'm going to pull up, um, pull these up, pull them up. I'm going to cut them up. And then in part two, I'll actually show you how I laid them out because I need these to dry for a little while before I mess with them. And then you'll see in the next video, I'll cut the square circles out and then I'll make them square after I try them all out and move them around and get the 10 different steps that I'm happy with. Okay, so go ahead and um, watch part two and then you can get started on this after you watch the demonstration so you understand what's going on. All right, class, if you have questions, make sure you reach out to me. I'm always available um, and you can message me and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible.